OK, uh, thank you for that kind introduction, Professor. Uh, good afternoon, fellow colleagues and professors. My name is Ivan, and I'd like to present to you my thesis this afternoon entitled Janus, a post-processor for vector analysis software. So just a brief outline of the presentation to come. I'd like to begin with a brief overview of what a vector actually is, which will lead right into our motivation for developing a post-processor. From there, uh, I will describe Janus in detail, covering topics such as the view controls, structure features, as well as result modes. Uh, this will be followed by a brief demonstration of Janus's features using a previous developed uh, Vector3 model, and finally concluded with some recommendations for future work. So to begin with, uh, Vector is a series of uh, nonlinear finite element analysis software programs developed here at the University of Toronto. Uh, it currently consists of five different programs, each providing analysis capabilities for a unique range of finite element types. So as uh, this figure shows uh, there's a significant range of the finite element types uh, supported by the various vector programs, and it definitely speaks to its overall versatility as a suite of analysis programs. However, regardless of uh, program type, the vector analysis procedure is uh, largely congruent across all programs. Uh, based on user-specified job, structure, and load settings, uh, the vector program produces corresponding expanded load, structure, and analysis output files in an expanded form. Although these files represent a veritable wealth of information uh, describing the overall behavior of the model under loading, um, it is provided in such a systematic and exhaustive manner that it's not conducive to human interpretation nor manual acquisition using uh, conventional tools such as uh, standard text editors or spreadsheet software. So as you may expect, the foreseen solution lay in the development of the post-processor program Janus. Uh, it would need to be able to comp comprehensively address all of the uh, identified issues, including the automated uh, acquisition of data, uh, visually displaying uh, global as well as local element results, and above all, it would need to be easy to use. So a bit of background into uh, Janus. Um, the original software framework was developed by uh, Dr. Mostafei uh, back in 2008, and then continued by myself as well as uh, Kira in 2011. Janus is coded in Visual C++ and utilizes the Microsoft Foundation classes and OpenGL specification for rendering purposes. In terms of its architecture, uh, Janus is organized in a typical document and view structure. Uh, the document is responsible for functions uh, associated with reading the output files, uh, extracting, organizing, and uh, storing values in memory, as well as converting data into uh, uh, on-screen display. On the other hand, the view class is used to specify and control the conceptual view camera that is used to portray the model to users. So in terms of uh, user interface, uh, Janus uh, operations are primarily uh, conducted using a standard three button mouse with a track wheel. As shown here, the left mouse button is used to uh, translate the model laterally as well as uh, vertically about the screen. The middle mouse button is used for 3D models uh, to rotate models about their axes. Scrolling the track wheel will zoom the model in and out. And lastly, the right mouse button is used to invoke the element attributes dialog, which I will discuss later. As far as alternative view modes, uh, Janus hosts the section view function, which, allows, which uh, displays intermediate planar sections of a model at any specified coordinate within the model boundaries. Within the, model, within the section view, section up and section down buttons may be used to incrementally increase or decrease section coordinates between intermediate layers of nodes. As well, vector-specific layer views are utilized to display sectional analysis, res analysis results for layered elements, such as the vector4 shell element and the vector5 output member element. In terms of displaying the actual structure itself, there are several features which are worthy of note. For example, the toggle element function allows users to selectively enable or disable uh, element types uh, as they desire. This function is seen uh, to have greatest utility for 3D models where exterior faces of elements or dense arrangements of elements may obscure internally uh, specified features such as nodal restraints and nodal load uh, case arrows. Speaking of load of restraints, uh, Janus represents uh, nodal restraints using planar restraint symbols that represent the restrained degree or degrees of freedom uh, of the axis that the symbol lies on. 
Linear displacements are represented using uh, classic roller and pin symbols, while rotational displacements are restrained using fixed support symbols. Accordingly, Janus is also capable of displaying nodal load cases. Linear forces and displacements are represented using single-headed arrows, while uh, applied moments and rotations are represented using either double-headed arrows in vector four or planar circular uh, symbols with arrowheads, as in vector five. The colors of the arrows correspond to values represented in the associated pop-up uh, load case dialog, as shown here. Lastly, the material mode recolors a model according to unique reinforced concrete, steel, and bond material types, with the color gradient corresponding to the pop-up uh, uh, titles in the legend dialog. As far as results, Janus is capable of displaying the uh, resulting data from uh, vector programs in a variety of manner, uh, manners. For example, nodal displacements can be represented directly on the structure as scaled model deformations where the user is in control of cal calibrating to which scale the de deformations are scaled to. As well, for uh, vector programs which support the output of crack data, Janus is capable of displaying crack lines using the crack pattern mode. Janus treats each crack as a singular crack line uh, positioned in this, on the centroid of the element and uh, according lines are projected upon each of the element face or faces in terms of a, th in terms of a 3D element. The color contour mode represents the most general purpose uh, result mode for displaying numerical results on a global basis. Depending on the context of the selected variable or parameter, nodes or elements will be recolored in a gradient which corresponds to values represented in the legend pop-up dialog, as shown here, with a uh, reinforced concrete uh, related variable, and here with a truss element related variable. Next, we have the hotspot mode which is a more refined uh, numerical result mode, Use, also using a single, uh, singly selected result uh, variable or parameter. Users also enter a numerical upper bound and lower bound value. Janus uses these upper bound and lower bound values, as well as number line relationships, to highlight on the model which elements either exceed the upper bound value or fall in between the specified lower bound and upper bound value. So this is illustrated here using a reinforced concrete element uh, variable as well as a truss element variable. Next, we have the data platform dialog, which was uh, developed in part by Akira. This is used to uh, extract data for up to five unique uh, variables and or parameters at a time. And users have three options for exporting the data. It can also, it can either be presented in a raw text format within the rich text uh, box below. Accordingly, it can also be displayed as a linear plot. Or lastly, it may be exported as a roll and column separated format uh, that can be opened by uh, spreadsheet software. Last but not least, we have the element attributes dialog, which is used, to, uh, which is used in combination with the uh, right mouse button to select single uh, reinforced concrete or truss elements. The element attributes dialog displays the current stress strain state of the element, as well as pertinent model uh, parameters, such as node coordinates, material properties, et cetera. So at this point in the presentation, I would like to illustrate some of Janus's capabilities using a previously developed uh, Vector3 model, which is based on this wind turbine foundation as shown here. The wind turbine foundation consists of three components, an octagonal uh, foundation pad, a circular loading pedestal, and a steel tower flange. The top and bottom uh, of the uh, foundation pad are reinforced with uh, steel in both directions. And vertical reinforcement is, a, is a positioned in a circumferential uh, directions about the uh, loading pedestal, uh, consisting of a combination of Z-bars as well as post-tension anchor bolts. So recognizing uh, symmetry in the overall loading as well as uh, model geometry, the wind terrain foundation model was simplified into a half model with appropriate restraint conditions at the plane of symmetry. As well, you'll notice that the circular loadings pedestal is represented with an equivalent rectangular one and the tower flange represented as a steel plate. So here's a conceptual representation of the vector three model or half model. 
It uses approximately 2,500 regular hexahedral elements, as well as about 500 truss elements, most of which are used to represent uh, compression-only truss elements uh, as the supporting soil layer below the bottom of the, of the foundation, as shown here is, as the gray layer. So here is the Janus portraying the model restraints of the model. You can see the vertical rollers uh, positioned at the plane of symmetry as well as the fully fixed uh, bottom nodes. And here are the load cases of the model. The load cases one, two, and three represent monotonically increasing uh, uh, axial shear as well as moment forces applied to the top of the loading pedestal. Low case four represents constant gravity-related loads, such as the self-weight of the foundation, as well as the overburdened uh, soil on top. This is the foundation model in the material mode, which with different colored uh, reinforced concrete materials representing unique orientations and or quantities of smeared longitudinal reinforcement. Here are some of the re result loads for the vector three model. I've combined the progressive deformations as well as crack patterns uh, displayed out the plane of symmetry in load factor increments of 0 0.5. So here we have 0, 0 0.5, 1, as well as 1.5. As well, we have the vector 3 model displaying the uh, color contour mode for uh, total strains in the x direction, as uh, shown here in, in this uh, dialog. Um, we also have the sec uh, according section views for the same contour mode. And these section views uh, progress all the way from the plane of symmetry out to the outer edge of the element, of, of the model. Lastly, we have the hotspot mode demonstrated for the same uh, total strain in the x direction at the same load stage. So this highlights uh, elements that have exceeded a certain uh, total strain value. Lastly, the data platform may be used to output uh, nodal displacement data, and as a result, you can determine the overall centerline rotation of the foundation with respect to the uh, progressive load factor, as shown here. Finally, I would like to conclude my presentation with some recommendations for future work uh, concerning Janus. Firstly, when a model is open, or when, a, when Janus is open and closed, the current configuration is reset to default values. It may be convenient to users to allow them to save and recall their preferences um, at their convenience. As well, the element attributes dialog is currently accessible only from the global model view. It would be beneficial to have an equivalent functionality within alternate view modes such as section view and layer view. As well, Janus does not currently support the view of model attributes such as node and element numbers directly on the model in global view. Uh, in order to allow users to form a definite visual connection between their results and the model itself, it will be uh, worthy to investigate such a feature. Uh, as well, Janus is currently only capable of displaying nodal load cases. Uh, it would be beneficial to expand its current uh, visual visualization capabilities to include element-based loads, such as self-weight or uni uniformly distributed loads. Lastly, the implementation of an electronic help manual, function description system, or perhaps even an, on, uh, an uh, animated tutorial could help to produce a standalone program that is easy to use and ready to familiarize users to uh, Janus. So with that, I would like to conclude my presentation, and thank you for your time.